Let us now introduce the convex subdifferential. Um, actually, there are quite a number of subdifferential notions, but most of them, at least those I know abo uh, about, um, for convex functions, they will give the same result, which, will, we would, which, which we will describe right now here. And um, the definition is as follows. So the definition is for a function f going from our usual um, uh, finite dimensional in a product space to the extended real line, we set yeah, can't put this here. Um, Um, partial f of x or df of x um, to be um, the, uh, the set of elements a and h such that for all y in h f of y would be greater than f of x plus inner product of a with x minus y. And this will be the case whenever um, f of x is a real number and we set uh, df of x uh, to be the empty set if f of x is plus or minus infinity. Okay, so what do we have here? We have that for all y, f of y is bounded from below by an affine function in y, where f of x plus inner product of a with minus x is the constant term, and inner product of a of y is the linear term. And so uh, the inner product is the, uh, co consists of the normal vector for certain um, affine minorans where the constant term has a special form such that um, it will be um, like a, a tangent for the function. So let's give an example. Okay. Um, um, if we take the, the absolute value function um, then we have, um, for example, this point, and we see f of y should be greater or equal than if we replaced a by the gradient of f of x, um, which exists here, um, then we get the first order Taylor approximation here. So f of x plus gradient f of x times x minus y. So it would be um, this thing here, this line, which is exactly the, the tangent at the point, uh, at this point here. Similarly, um, here, you at, uh, at, at any positive point, you would get this tangent here. Um, and at zero, there are a lot of points such that uh, f is uh, major, uh, it, it's uh, so that an, an affine minor run to f is given with some tangent. For example, there is this one, this one, and also plus uh, the the uh, affine minor runs with uh, slope plus one and minus one. So what we can say here is, whenever we take the absolute value function and take um, the uh, subdifferential at any point, then we will get um, minus one uh, whenever a x is less than zero. This is this part, and the slope will be minus one. And we get plus one if x is greater than zero. And we will we say that, uh, and we will get everything in between. So the the closed interval 
between minus 1 and plus 1 um, if x is equal to 0. Okay, so this shows that uh, the subdifferential will be even will even be meaningful if um, the function is non-differentiable as the uh, as ho as is the case for the absolute value function. And we will we will also say that elements of um, df of x um, are called subgradients of f at x because um, whenever the function is in fact differentiable then um, this will correspond to the, the, the gradient. Okay, and the mapping df, uh, what kind of mapping is this? We take a point in H and we associate with this point a subset. And actually, for more precision, I should write that these are these one element set here, one element sets here, consisting only of minus one consisting only of plus one, respectively. And this is therefore a mapping from which maps from H to the subsets of H, and we denote this by um, H uh, and double arrows H. So this is a so-called set-valued mapping, and this mapping is called the sub differential. Okay, now I think I have everything I wanted to cover for just for the definition. Um, so we see from the um, theorem uh, about uh, once differentiable functions that obviously the gradient satisfies this inequality. So we see that um, the gradient of f, um, yeah, I should, I should not write this with, um, with uh, this set notation, so uh, at least not yet. Um, so we will see that this gradient is an element of the subdifferential of f of x if f is <coughs> differentiable. And it will, in fact, turn out that um, the gradient is the only um, element of the subdifferential in this case. Um, and, the, and of course, I forgot if f is differentiable, and since I didn't, con I didn't assume convexity explicitly here, although it's usually reasonable to assume that, um, and convex. Okay. So we have that. Um, next, uh, we, want to, we want to prove some properties. Um, the first property also appeared in the, um, in the theorem about differentiable functions, and this is called the monotonicity property. And the proof is very similar to, to the proof in, the, in this theorem for differentiable functions. And the property is as follows. So if we have two points, x and y in H, and we have a in df of x and b in df of y, then the inner product of a minus b and x minus y will always be greater or equal than zero. Okay, so this is uh, the monotonicity property here, um, which we have seen is um, satisfied for the gradient. 
So if you have a convex differentiable function, then the gradient of f of x minus the gradient f of y um, in the inner product with x minus y will always be greater or equal to zero. Okay, then let's try to do a bit of calculus with our, um, our subgradients. Um, we, had, we have calculus properties for the usual gradients and uh, let's try to establish some results which will not be as satisfying as the usual gradient, uh, the, the rules for the gradient like the chain rule um, or the sum rule are. Okay, so um, the first property is kind of obvious, so subdifferential of um, positive multiples. So the subdifferential of lambda f is equal to lambda. Uh, oh, yeah, I should not. I should not write it like this. I should write it with a point. So with which with a point. So the subdifferential of lambda f at x is equal to lambda times the subdifferential of f at x for lambda greater than zero and f from uh, h to r bar. Okay, and this lambda f of x, um, so should, yeah, this is as we had it in the in the video about um, the um, vector spaces. So lambda f of x is just um, multiplying these function, all the function values of f with lambda and then obtaining a new function from that. Um, so um, this holds. Obviously <clears throat> the factor here needs to be positive to preserve convexity. So if you had minus the absolute value function, um, the subdifferential will in fact be empty everywhere. Um, so this will contradict this property for negative lambda. Okay, next are sums. So here we have the subdifferential of um, um, the subdifferential of f1 plus f2 at x. And usually if you had the gradient here, then the gradient would be equal to the sum of the gradients. Um, so it would, so with the subdifferential, you might expect to be this, uh, to, the, might expect this to be um, df1 of x plus df2 of x. Um, and in fact, uh, this is not true with equality, it's only true um, with this inclusion. So this Minkowski sum of the, of the subdifferential will always be a subset of um, the subgradient, uh, of the subdifferential of the sum. So whenever you know um, subgradients here, you, know, you also know at least one subgradient here. But you can't guarantee that you know all the subgradients by using um, all the subgradients of the components of the sum and functions. Um, by the way, I mentioned this is the Minkowski sum, and for the um, positive multiples, this would be um, um, uh, would be defined as lambda a with lambda uh, with a in df of x. Okay, so this is about sums. Then we have compositions. Um, here we have um, f1 and f2 um, just functions. So compositions. Um, what do we have here now? Um, we assume that we have 
um, uh, we want to calculate the subdifferential of a composition of some function, usually it will be convex, and um, a linear operator. If you do this for gradients, then you have to apply the chain rule. Um, the chain rule will, say, will tell you, well, um, if, you if you wanted to calculate the gradient of um, f composed with L, then what you have to take is you take the gradient, uh, which in our case will be the subdifferential of f at the point Lx, and then you have to take the inner um, derivative, and this will be given by, or will be applied by prepending this with the adjoint operator to L. Um, and again here, this will only, once you, uh, if you know this, uh, the, the uh, subgradients of F at this point, this will only give you um, a subset usually of these, uh, of, of this um, subdifferential. And here we have to uh, define um, the, um, the, the mappings um, also. Let me just check. So here we have some operator, some linear operator from A, H to G. Both are finite dimensional inner product spaces. So this is linear. And then, um, so if we um, if we uh, compose this with f, so f will then be applied to the result of applying l to x, so this will be an element in g, so f um, goes from g to r bar, um, here x is in h, uh, this by the way also holds for the other um, uh, for, for the other um, properties here. So f and x and h, l maps from a, h to g, so lx will be an element in g, and f of uh, applied to this element uh, should be uh, an, ex uh, an extended real value. And if you do this for the subdifferential, then lx will be in g, the subdifferential of f will map from g to subsets of g, and L star uh, will therefore have to map from G to H. So, and this is called the adjoint. And it is defined by, well, if you apply L star to some Y and take the inner product with X, then this will be w the inner product of Y with LX for all x in h and y in g. Okay, this closes this parenthesis. Okay, um, we have this example of the absolute value function. Let's now uh, get to another example. And this example will, um, will be um, normal cones. So take f equal to dc um, with c being a subset of, of our space. Usually this will be, we will have a convex and most often closed subset here. Um, but uh, formally you can certainly take the indicator function for any set and apply the, the definition to, to this um, indicator function. Okay, so um, what do we have here? If we if we take um, if we take some set here, um, the normal cone in a point x will be um, so this thing here, this. Uh, um, thing going outside will be x plus the normal cone of c at x. 
So if you take the normal cone, then this will be centered in zero. And if you shift it out, uh, out to x, this will be um, x plus the normal cone. And, and this is exactly what I wrote here. If you modify x a bit so that it contains like um, some corner here, then this, uh, the result might be a, a bit different. Um, so you take these, these tangent here, um, you uh, take the, the orthogonal angles here, and the normal cone um, in this point x here will be um, this. And the sub-differential of the indicator function will exactly be the normal cone. So let's uh, uh, show what this means. Um, so the normal cone of uh, C at X in H is, and we write this as NC of X, and this is the sub-differential of the indicator function um, at x. And this will be the set of all, just by the definition, a in h, such that for all y in h, um, dc of y, and I have to begin a new line, dc of y will be greater or equal than dc of x um, plus inner product of a with y minus x. And here, um, this uh, inequality only really makes sense whenever we take y in c itself, because if y is outside of c, then the indicator function um, of y at c is uh, also um, is, is, is plus infinity, and therefore um, plus infinity is greater than anything on the left hand side. So uh, if y is outside of c, the inequality is satisfied automatically. So we can just say that this is the set of all a in h, such that for all y in c, this is the interesting case. And here we have 0 is greater than. And now, um, as you see here, um, if, if, if you have 0 here, then this only makes sense. So this only gives some meaningful, meaningful value, some, some meaningful set for the subdifferential if x is in c. So we only deal with the case x not in h as I wrote here, but x in c. Okay, For x outside of c, um, it would not really be um, like meaningful to define any normal cone um, in, in this fashion. So here we have 0 is greater or equal than 0 plus inner product of a y minus x. And this is the definition of the normal cone. And this is exactly what you see here. You take um, the uh, tangents to the set C, um, if, you, if you can somehow find them. Um, take um, orthogonal angles. And you see, whenever you are in x, any, any element here in, in, in C um, will have um, a negative inner product. So y minus x, this vector here, will have a negative inner product with any anything in the normal cone. So the, the angle between, I should use different colors probably, so the angle between this element y minus x and, and any element in the normal cone will always be greater or equal to 90 degrees. Um, so it will always be um, greater or equal than these 
a 90 degree angle here. And this is what this um, inner product relation says. And um, in the next steps, we will investigate um, when we actually can find um, um, elements in this uh, subgradient and what this uh, in, in this subdifferential and what this subdifferential, uh, which properties it satisfies.